Hi, my name is Jay Rott, Senior Service and Training Specialist for the Waterist Company. Today we're going to talk about basic pump theory of a centrifugal pump. We're going to start with the CM pump and CS pump, midship style. Uh, we're going to talk about bringing the water in from the intake side of the pump through the impeller out to the discharge. Right, basic components, it's the bronze impeller, that's standard in the fire service, resistance to heat, resistance to corrosion. Uh, the basic parts of this impeller, very centers the bore. It's pressed onto the impeller shaft. There's a keyway cut into it, so it's keyed on. We're going to trap the impeller shaft in the impeller axially, so we use a C ring or a retaining ring on the back side of the impeller, a lock ring or a nut or a snap ring on the front side, depending on the design. Now, whenever the impeller shaft rotates, the impeller is going to rotate with it. Right? Around the bore is the eye. This is where the water comes to from the outside source. Comes uh, in the intake side of the pump into the eye of the impeller. Inside the eye are the five blade-like things in there. Those are the veins of the impeller. So it's actually going to create this centrifugal force to move the water out of the impeller. Uh, around the eye is the hub of the impeller. That is the main point of wear inside the pump. When you rebuild the pump, this is typically what you're going in to rebuild, is this area right here. Around the hub of the impeller is the front shroud. Okay. On the back of the impeller is the back shroud. And then we have the exit way of the impeller, where the water comes out, comes into the eye, comes out of the exit way, whenever the impeller is turning and rotating. All right. Now we've cut away the back side of this impeller so you can see how the impeller actually functions. So the veins of the impeller start off in the eye of the impeller. And centrifugal actually means the force starts in the middle, makes its way towards the exit way. Okay? And what an impeller actually does is adds velocity to the water, speeds it up, makes it move faster. As this impeller rotates, this side of the vein will hurl the water out of the impeller and send it out towards the exit way of the impeller and out into the pump body to the discharge side of the pump. Again, what an impeller is doing is adding velocity, speeding the water up. As the water is sped up, it's going to be thrown out into the exit way of the pump and then out towards your discharge. Right now, the outside of the exit way of the impeller, it's a sealed vessel. The water can't go anywhere until you open up a discharge valve, open up the nozzle on the end of the hand line. When that's all closed, it's a sealed vessel. That water is being thrown into the discharge side of the pump will now create pressure. Okay? When you open up a discharge valve, open up the nozzle at the end of the hand line, you now are going to open up that pressure inside the pump to atmospheric pressure. Water is going to seek that lower pressure outside the pump. So the impeller has to rotate in that direction, okay? again, adding velocity. Now, as far as the impellers, before we ship them out or before we can put them into a pump, they have to be balanced. So we set the impeller on the machine. It's got graduation marks around the pedestal on the side of the uh, impeller that's going to spin and then the machine will come up and tell us at that graduation point, it's point 0.230, it's so many ounces over. Okay, so they'll take the impeller off of the uh, pedestal, grind it in a certain spot, put it back on the machine, spin it again until it comes up and says it's a true part. All right. Now let's go inside the pump. So now we're going to go over and look at the S100 in the centrifugal impeller inside the pump body. Okay. Uh, bronze impeller, just like we talked about before. We're now going to direct the water from the intake side of the pump to the discharge. So if you notice, the impeller doesn't set in the middle of the body. It's pulled over to one side. It's closer on this side than it is over on the other side of the impeller. This area we're creating is called the volute of the pump. It's a pathway for the water to follow. Okay, so the water is going to move in that direction. The impeller is going to rotate, adding velocity to the water, spinning like that. But this particular pump, the S100, has two volutes. There's a top volute and a bottom volute. So this volute here and then the bottom volute of the pump. The water always seeks the path of least resistance, or a high pressure will seek a low pressure. So when we tuck the impeller over tight to the side of the pump body, we create an area of high pressure. As it comes around going out to the end of the volute, it's, it's lower pressure, so it's a pathway for that water to follow. Okay? The other thing we're creating at the end of that volute is called the stripping edge. It's a knife-like edge which cuts the water off of the impeller as that impeller rotates. 
So we have a high pressure on this side coming around, getting cut off on this stripping edge. We have another flute that starts here that comes around and it gets cut off on this stripping edge. Comes off on this side of the pump. The two discharges do come together at the end of the, uh, at the discharge flange here. Centrifugal pumps are not 100% efficient. Some of the water you put in is not going to come out. It's going to stay inside the pump body. It's going to circulate inside the volute area. Okay? But the main point of inefficiency inside a centrifugal pump is actually the water coming off the discharge side of the pump back into the intake. Okay? We can't seal it off completely. We have to do something to restrict the flow of water from the discharge side back into the intake of the pump. What we use is called a wear ring okay? or a clearance ring, some people call it but it's a piece of bronze, the same basic material as your impeller. Okay? And as uh, this is put inside the pump body, the wear ring is trapped in the body. So on an end suction pump like that, that's the wear ring here, it's been cut away on this section so you can see the outside of the impeller, but this is trapped in the intake adapter. Inside of a midship style pump, we have actually two halves of the pump. We have a bottom half and a, and a top half, a body portion, and we machine a bore inside the pump for the uh, wear rings to set. The bore that's machined into the pump body is actually smaller than the OD of the wear ring. When we put the two halves together, that seizes the wear ring in place. It can't turn, it's pressed into place. And when the impeller shaft assembly is put together, the hub of the impeller fits inside the wear ring. So now the water, when it wants to circulate back into the eye, has to come out the exit way of the impeller, down the front shroud, and then it has to go through the clearance back into the eye of the impeller. Okay, increasing the efficiency of the pump, keeping the pressure on the discharge side. The clearance between the hub of the impeller and the wear ring is about three to seven thousandths of an inch diametrically around the hub of the impeller. That keeps the pressure on the discharge side of the pump. We have three different types of wear rings that we use. A conventional cut, which would be like this. So going on to a standard impeller hub. So it fits over the hub of the impeller. So the water comes down, out the exit way, down the front shroud, through the clearance, back into the eye of the impeller. Okay, that's the conventional cut. We also have a wrap around, which is the water comes out of the exit way of the impeller, down the front shroud, and around the hub of the impeller back into the eye of the impeller. What we've been using since the 70s is called the Labyrinth Reverse Flow Wear Ring. The wear ring actually has a stub that sticks out of it, okay, so it sticks out on one side. The impeller has a recess cast into the front shroud that when assembled, the stub that sticks out fits back inside the recess. Okay. Now when the water wants to circulate to get back into the eye of the impeller, it has to come down the front shroud on the outside of the recess, on the outside of the wear ring, back towards the impeller, down, then through the clearance back into the eye. Reducing the flow by how, making the water move and break as it comes back into the eye of the impeller, making the impeller more efficient.